made it to Philly. There's Drexel University. It's a nice day out. Hey, hey, I'm Dr. Nashley, your favorite AWS tech evangelist, and I am yet again at the University of Pennsylvania. Happy to be here. And I am talking with one of my colleagues, also a former intern at AWS AI, Alexander Tolbert. How's it going? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Good, good. So I know you were an uh, intern twice on the yeah. team with AWS AI over summers. And um, I'm just curious, like, what interested you in responsible AI and some of the work that you were doing? So, yeah, so what interested me in the topic of responsible AI was honestly my background experience, uh, African American male, and growing up in an environment where I saw uh, some of the impact of policing as well as the effects of. Um, automated decision making in our my community. So um, I think that's what got me interested in the topic. Yeah, yeah. And, and tell your background again, because you're you're somewhat of a non traditional um, person on the team. And so talk about your make your major and everything your background. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I started off my undergrad was in biology and I taught high school science for a while and then I ended up getting my master's degree in philosophy and biochemistry. And so that's how I sort of got interested in philosophy of science and ethics. And uh, when I got to the University of Pennsylvania, uh, I found out about uh, Michael Kearns and Aaron's Roth Research Group and that they were working on questions that I was really interested in. So I reached out to them and I took a class and I really liked it. And so, yeah, so a lot of my graduate training has been in uh, the intersection of philosophy and statistics. And I even completed a master's in statistics while I was at the University of Pennsylvania. Wow, wow. Very interesting. I, I think the beauty of this is that, you know, everybody has something to bring to the table, yeah. um, you know, regardless of what, what your background is. As a uh, responsible AI is a, a problem that everyone can contribute to right. um, to solving. And so, uh, if you could talk about either a paper or some of your work or a topic um, that really you know interests you that you've been working on, uh, that you like to share just to the everyday uh, layperson. Yeah. So one of the more recent papers that we've been working on that I'm really excited about actually merges questions in philosophy with questions in machine learning. And so uh, as we just mentioned earlier, um, automated decision making is uh, pervasive in our society and is often used in the form of uh, decision support. Or and so people, uh, we make predictions about whether or not somebody is going to reoffend. We make predictions about whether or not somebody is going to develop breast cancer, and these things have consequential impacts on their self development. And so one of the questions in philosophy of science emerges is um, if a person belongs to multiple different groups, which of those groups should we sort of like condition on or pick to make our prediction? So an important court case that happened a while back, uh, Charles Shinobi uh, was convicted or was uh, caught smuggling heroin and um, they had to make a decision on how much time they should sentence him with. And one of the reference classes they chose, one of the groups they chose to uh, build this, or to make this estimation off of was his racial membership group. And his defense argued that there were multiple other groups that they could make this uh, estimation from and what privileged this choice of group over any number of groups that this person was a member of. And this, per this problem actually emerges in the philosophy of science and it's called the reference class problem. Like what group should we pick uh, that an individual might belong to in order to make predictions about them? Uh, some of it also comes up in the stereotyping literature as well in philosophy. So when I see a person on the street, uh, I don't know anything about them. Uh, I try to pick what group I think they might belong to to make a prediction. So when I'm on campus at Penn and uh, we're in Philly, you can make any number of 
decisions about what group I might belong to to decide whether or not you think I might rob you or whatever. And, you know, what privileges the choice that somebody might make that, you know, I'm an African American or I'm a black person. Um, and the sort of flip side of this problem also emerges in machine learning. Uh, and this problem in machine learning, uh, or the flip side of machine learning, is called model multiplicity. And so in machine learning, we can have two predictive models that are equally accurate, but they uh, assign different individual probabilities to a person. And so there's this question there of how do we adjudicate which model we should pick from. These models are equally accurate, but they assign different scores for, uh, let's say, like my, whether or not I'm going to like uh, reoffend. Uh, and so in our paper, we uh, make an argument that two uh, parties coming to the data, agreeing on the data in good faith and allowing our models to uh, be falsified, can disagree uh, over individual probabilities and principle. And the way we do this is by uh, defining a set of points that these models disagree on, using that region of points to falsify one of the models and then uh, essentially like using that region to patch or update uh, the new model. And so these models end up agreeing almost everywhere and also being uh, more accurate overall. Um, and so hopefully this is something that uh, can be used to settle disagreements when we have two models, or two part, I mean two models uh, that agree, I uh, me that disagree on individual probabilities. Um, and so, yeah, so this is some, a paper that I've been really excited about that I've spent a lot of time working on that sort of blends the area of philosophy. And, yeah, yeah, uh, wow. That, that is amazing. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, people don't realize, again, the interdisciplinary work that goes into uh, you know different areas of responsible AI. And I um, love what you said about uh, looking at the different groups. I know one of the things uh, that we do when we're, you know, looking at models and uh, you know, error rates is to look at different intersections of groups as how those results look from those models. And you're taking it a whole other step uh, farther than that. And so I think this is great work that you're doing. And um, you, you all have an awesome team. Yeah. And um, anything else you want to share with people? Yeah, I would just encourage them to, you know, no matter what, you know, if they don't think they're super technical, no matter what their educational background is, that they uh, can contribute to this area, you know, uh, uh, even the technical skills that I develop, you know, you know, I was able to do them like while I was in grad school and also a lot of things I learned with just being in conversation with people. And so I just think, uh, you know, um, not selling yourself short and like realizing that everyone has a voice to add. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, books is uh, Dark Water by W.B. Du Bois. And one of the uh, arguments he makes in this book is that, look, uh, people who should engage, we, we all have something to bring to political decision making. And even though we may all have different educational backgrounds, the voice thought that we all have different experiences that inform, that do provide us with knowledge. And so the voice argued that uh, uh, essentially our experiences of oppression, we all experience various types of like marginalization or oppression in our life should be informing decision making and polity. And so uh, just sort of, that was also sort of the spirit in which uh, I, I wanted to engage in academia to be in conversation with lots of different people, like hear their experiences and share mine. And so I think that uh, I would just encourage those who were interested in the area to, you know, not be, you know, you know, uh, off put by you yeah, know, what they yeah. think might be yeah. too technical to engage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that is really awesome. And um, we're really looking forward to checking out that paper yeah. and um, following more of your research. For and, sure. Um, and definitely, you know, keep in touch with us at, on the teams at AWS. Yeah. And so, thank you all so much for tuning in. Us, Dr. Nashley, and this is Alexander Talbert. And you all take care. Thanks.